Hi and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Synology RT6600AX as a file server for your home. Now, this isn't as robust as using a network attached storage with multiple drives, but it'll get the job done if you just want to share some files or back up a couple of computers to a network drive. So if this is something you think you're interested in seeing, then stick around for the rest of this video. Okay, I'm signed into the Synology router. Let's get right to it. Let's come over and click on the control panel. You can see here it brings us to the user tab by default. Let's come down one and click on storage. You can see the message here says no available storage device. Please attach a compatible storage device first. So we're getting this message because I don't have my USB drive attached to the router. For this video, I'm using a Western Digital 2 terabyte elements drive. So let me get that attached and then we'll come back and we'll refresh the page and see if the router recognizes the device. Okay, I have the drive connected to the router now, so let's refresh this page. Let's simply just click on user and then come back and click on storage. And here you can see now the router has recognized the USB drive. So a couple of things we can do on this tab here. We can come over and give the device a name. So I'll call it file share test for this purpose of this video. I can see we have a system event Notice that popped up. Let's just quickly go up and see what that says. So if we click on the system events, it says to reduce interference to Wi-Fi 2.4, your USB 3.0 device was downgraded to USB 2.0. And that really shouldn't matter much for home use. Let's go over back to this window here. Now we've given it a new name called file share test. You have the option of enabling the recycling bin. So I'm going to go ahead and enable it. Just keep in mind by doing this, you're taking the risk of files being discarded from the share pretty easily. Again, this can be set based on the preferences for your environment, but I'm just going to leave it enabled for now for the purpose of this demonstration. You can see here that the only user that has access to the file share right now is Tony Smiraldi. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click on apply. Next, let's move over to the storage tab. Let's just take a look around and see what we have. So here's the drive right here. If we click on the drive, you can see these three buttons become available to you. Eject, basically it says here, please press eject first before removing the drive, which is typical of any best practice. Here's the format button if you need to format the drive. And then under advanced settings, you can do things like set up the system database, default permissions and write cache support. Under the media indexing tab, if you want to use this as a home media server, it'll scan and index the multimedia files as your photos, music, and videos that are stored on the router. Under the hibernation tab, USB hard disk will hibernate after being inactive for the configured time period. And these are all the different available options in the drop down menu. Now, please note hibernation will only work with USB devices that support hibernation. Okay, so now we're in the file services area. It's just the third item down in the left window pane. And you can see here by default, Windows file service is not enabled. So what we need to do is enable Windows file service. And you can see it just creates by default the work group. Work group, you can change this, but I'm gonna leave it as work group for now. And it automatically enables SMB2, which is great for Mac support. Now, if you look here, it's showing us the two different ways that we can connect using Windows Explorer or the Mac Finder. We're going to use this a little later on in the video, so let me copy this. And then let's just scroll down quickly. We can enable the Mac file service, but the only reason I would do this is if we wanted to use the drive as a time machine backup. Since the Macs do support SMB, we, there is really no need to enable the Mac file service, but I'll show you here if you enable this, and then under Time Machine, you can actually select the file share that we created earlier, and then Time Machine can use that to back up to. But again, for the purpose of this video, we're not going to enable that. Let's just go ahead and click on Apply. Now, one other thing I want to show you, you may be prompted at some point during this process to allow firewall rules. By default, enabling the Windows file service will create a firewall rule that opens up a couple of ports, ports 137, 38, 39, and 445. So let's go ahead and let me just show you that real quick. Let's come over to the network center. 
And let's come down into the security tab and then up to firewall. And you can see this first rule right here. It says Windows File Server. If I double click on that to take a look at that, it's the rule that was created by the system. So they called it system rule. And then if we come all the way down here, you can see all the different criteria. But if we look at the ports, select from a list of built-in applications. If we click on the select button, you can scroll down. You can see here it enabled 137, 38, 39, 445. So we'll just go ahead and cancel that for now. I just wanted to show that to you. Okay, so now we're in the user tab. Let's go ahead and create a couple of users. We'll create two users. First, we'll come over and click on the plus sign to create the first user. You can see it says unnamed. We'll come over here. We'll give this one a name. We'll call this Joe. And we'll give Joe a password. We'll keep it simple for this video, but just make sure you use a good password in live production. We'll come down and before we click apply, we're not going to give Joe access to the file share the entire folder so we'll come down and we'll click apply and now we'll add one more user we'll call this user j again we'll give j a password and then again we're not going to give j access to the entire share let's come down and we'll click on apply Okay, I have both of my users created. Now you would create the number of users that your household requires. Okay, now that we have our users created, it's time to create some shared folders and set some permissions. So we're back in the storage tab here in the left window pane. The first shared folder I'm gonna create is a public folder. So let's come over and click on the plus sign and we'll just call this public. And this will be a folder that all users on the router will be able to access and we'll come over. We'll enable the recycle bin and we'll come down and we'll click on OK. And there's our public share. But now you can see that the only user right now that has access to the public share is Tony Smiraldi. So we'll go ahead and we'll give Joe and Jay read write access. Now you can see you have other options, no access and read only. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to go ahead and use read write and say apply. Now that we have the public folder created, let's create a folder for each user. Let's come back up to the plus sign. We'll click a folder for Joe. We'll call this Joe's folder. We'll enable the recycle bin. We'll come down, we'll click OK. And now we'll create a folder for J. We'll call it J folder. Again, we'll enable the recycling bin and we'll click OK. Now you can see we have a folder for Jay and a folder for Joe, but we still have to set permissions. So we'll come back up to the J folder and we'll come over here in the user permissions and we'll select user J and give J read write permissions to that folder. So you can see now Tony Smiraldi, which we'll consider in this case, the admin user has permission to all the folders, but J only has permission to his folder. We'll click on apply. And we'll do the same thing now for Joe. We'll click on Joe folder and we'll come over and click on the user Joe and give Joe read write permissions to that folder as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on apply. And now that we have all our permissions set up, we should be able to access the public folder. Joe should be able to access his folder and Jay should be able to access his folder. So we'll go ahead and we'll give that a shot. Okay, so now that we have everything set up in the Synology router, we should be able to access the file share, no problems. Here's what I expect to happen if I set everything up correctly. Signing in as the user, Tony Smiraldi, Tony should have access to everything. The file share, Joe's folder, Jay's folder, and the public folder. If I sign in as either the user Joe or the user Jay, they should have access only to their folder and to the public share, nothing else. So let's test this out. Let's switch over to the computer now and see what happens. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up to the go menu. We'll come down to the network. Here we can see the Synology router is showing up, not showing anything here because the status says not connected. So let's go ahead and connect. And first we'll connect as the user, Tony Smiraldi.
And here you can see it's showing all four items, the file share test, Jay's folder, Joe's folder, and the public folder. And I should be able to mount each of these on my desktop. So let's go ahead and see if we can do that. So there's the file share test. There's Jay's folder, Joe's folder, and the public folder. So that is working as expected. Let me go ahead and remove all of these. We'll eject all four drives. We'll go back to the network and now we'll sign in as one of the other users. So we'll go to Synology router again, nothing is showing because we're not connected. So this time we'll connect as let's say Joe. And here we have all four items showing up. However, we should only be able to have access to the public folder and Joe's folder. So let's go ahead and see if we can mount the public folder. And there it is. And you can see that Joe has access to that thumbnail template. There's Joe's folder mounted on the desktop. Now, if we attempt to access Jay's folder, nothing should happen. It's not mounting on the desktop, nor is the file share. But if we attempt to double click on either one of these two, we should get this message here that says the operation cannot be completed. So that's exactly what we want. Let me go ahead and eject both of these. And we'll go ahead now and we'll just do the same thing one more time, connecting as the user J, just to make sure everything is working as expected. And there we go. Everything is showing up again. We should only have access to the public folder which there it is, and Jay's folder, there it is. If we attempt to click on Joe's folder, nothing happens. If we attempt to click on the file share test, nothing happens. And again, if we double click on either the file share or Joe's folder, we should get the operation cannot be completed message, and we do. Okay, so now let's go ahead and connect to the share another way. Let's go up to the Go menu, come down to connect to server, Let's paste in the address from earlier that we copied from the router itself. It's SMB colon slash slash Synology router. Let's go ahead and click on connect. And here you can see it's bringing up a screen where we can sign in now. So I'll put in the password for user Tony Smiraldi. And there we have all four items in here. I could choose what I want to mount as well. So I'll go ahead and mount the public folder. And there it is. Okay. Let me eject that. We'll do it one more time with one more user and then we'll call it a wrap. So we'll go down to connect to server. URL is already in there. Let's go ahead and click on connect. This time we'll connect as the user J. And we'll go ahead and click on connect. And then here's Jay's folder. We'll go ahead and mount it. And there it is. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. What do you think about using the Synology router as a simple home file server? Let me know down in the comments below. What we accomplished in this video, well, we set up the storage device on the router. We set up file services. We created users and we created shares and assigned permissions. So that said, if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out other videos that I have listed here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you as I do in every video for using the Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. Once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.